time for the easiest pun of my career. It's time for round two, ladies and gentlemen. To say that the response to the punch out video has blown me away would be an insult to blowing. At time of recording, the video has cracked one million views and still climbing. Not only has the video had a big effect on me as a creator, it's apparently also had an effect on the Punch-Out fandom. But seriously, if you check out the Punch-Out wiki, now every fighter that I covered has a section about the rules they've broken. I wondered if this was because of me, but then I saw that they used the word infraction and knew it was me. I used that word about 100 trillion times in the last one, so it couldn't be anyone else. Well, today we're changing some hearts, minds, and most importantly, Wikipedia articles, because we're stepping back into the squared circle to take a look at more of Punch-Out's boxers, to see what exactly they're doing to try and one-up the current reigning and defending champion, Aaron Ryan. Gonna be a long road, certainly, but the fighters we have lined up look like they're more than good enough competition, including one person who I seem to have forgotten in the last video, though I can't seem to place my finger on who exactly. Donkey Kong! So to start off, I feel it's important to quell or address points brought up by others about the past video. First and most commonly was Great Tiger's head covering being a religious headpiece and therefore protected, and they'd be right to say as such. A turban is often worn by Shia Muslims, and with the rules regarding women's boxers wearing full body coverings and hijabs, I'm willing to let Great Tiger go on this one. It's not like he doesn't have eight other rules he's breaking, he's not going to be hurting by losing one. I wouldn't want to make a ruling that God himself wouldn't agree with me on. Another common one was the use of a backhanded strike in the ring. It is indeed illegal to backhand, as well as illegal to attack with an ear clapping move. For that reason, we're adding a few more infractions. King Hippo claps the ears in both his Hippo Squash and Squash and Slam. Bear Hugger's Bear Hug is quite literally just an ear clap. Great Tiger smacks you with the side of his hands when he does the Mirage Dance, as well Don Flamenco gets one for his backhanded slap. It was also brought up that Mr. Sandman did have an infraction, as he uses an overhand punch in his fight. Actually, not only are overhand punches legal, but they're an important part of boxing, only to be used when you have a height advantage over your opponent. Everybody has a height advantage over you! So Mr. Sandman's punch is clean! It's illegal, however, to hit your opponent with the side of your hand, which is exactly what I'd call these. So that's one extra point for Von Kaiser, three for Hippo, one for Bear Hugger, two Great Tiger, one for Don Flamenco, and one more for Super Macho Man. Still putting none of them within spitting distance of Aaron, but that's what the new crop of fighters is for. Except, not all fighters are created equal. See, as much as it pains me, a lot of these fighters don't do anything wrong. Kid Quick, Piston Hurricane, Mr. Dream, Mike Tyson, and Pizza Pasta are all too boring to be considered for the list, since they're just bog standard boxers. I know Pizza Pasta is someone that a lot of people wanted me to talk about, but trust me, the only interesting thing about him is his name. Also, if I start judging real world boxer Mike Tyson, I'm afraid he's gonna come to my house and perform amateur brain surgery on me with his fists. My style is impetuous, my defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want your heart, I wanna eat his children. I ain't judging! Other than those guys, everyone else from the arcade games and NES game has already been covered meaning that now all that's left Besides him. is Super Punch-Out. Categorically, nobody's favorite Punch-Out game. Something to get out of the way is that almost every fighter has their coach shouting instructions to them in the ring, ranging from PUNCH GOOD to HERE'S A KNIFE, GET HIM! I'll be including any egregious examples of outside coaching in their score. The first boxer in which being Glass Joe's protege, Gabby J. Just like Joe, he seems too pathetic to be hiding any nefarious tactics, and in all fairness, he isn't. He's wearing his cheating all over his body. See, in boxing, to avoid watching two grandpas fight like a blown call at a Little League game, there are age limits on when you can box up until. Most major organizations place that somewhere around 40. After that, you leave any age bracket created and can't fight at such a high level. Gabby J is 16 years on from when his last fight should have been. 16 years of fighting past your prime, only ever losing, along with the ravages of time mean that Gabby J will be lucky if he ever walks again. This man is trying to speedrun dementia like he's playing everywhere at the end of time at 20 times speed! Other than that, he's fine, but somebody needs to trank this geezer before he tries to come out to the ring with an oxygen tank! After the skippable bear hugger, piston hurricane, and bald bull, it's time to infringe on some copyright with Bob Charlie. Just do as little as possible to hide it. He's the best kind of distinct. Legally! So as you can very clearly see, he's got a headband, and what's good for the Honda is good for the Charlie, and he's already got one infraction. Something interesting to note is that since his hair is so long, he's at risk of blinding himself and potentially getting it ripped out from the roots. Overall, that leaves Charlie with two different rule breaks. I'm counting the hair as one since I doubt they'd let him fight like that for his own safety. Also, copyright infringement isn't counted since they're not gonna have court proceedings in the ring, so it's outside my jurisdiction. Moving on to quite possibly the most famous cheat and punch out, Dragon Chan is most famous for being the example I brought up last time to bring up how much cheating there is. So let's get it out of the way. First off, jumping is technically not illegal. It's dumb as hell, but it's not illegal. However, jumping onto the ropes is super illegal. I don't need to tell you that. But then there's the kick itself. Kickboxing exists. And even there, you can't do this. This might as well be the most blatant foul thus far because, yeah, you obviously can't kick in a boxing match. That's the whole point. 
On top of that, he performs the kick in two unique instances, once by simply kicking and then by doing his jump kick. But not just the kick is illegal though, as his pants reach down below his knees, his shoes aren't regulation boxing boots, and while the belt does provide a line of demarcation, it in and of itself is an unnecessary accessory and is therefore illegal. Given the fact that he has experience as a kickboxer, the question has to be asked why he felt the need to drop the kick part and try straight up boxing. Up next is the boxer I was most excited to cover when we got to Super Punch Out, and that's Masked Muscle. Being a luchador from Mexico, he's the second boxer thus far to bring an outside fighting style to boxing. And this one is even less of a fit than the last one! At least that one had the word boxing in the title! Pro wrestling is about as far from boxing as you can get. So before we get to his moves, I don't actually know what to do about one of his infractions. See, his mask is obviously a head covering, his wrestling tights extend into his boots, and then there are his knee pads. Technically he's already covering his knees with his tights, but man, it feels like this is even more of a cheat than usual. I'm willing to count this as doubling up, like the ref would ask them to take off his knee pads, see the pants underneath, and just give up. Also, I'm willing to bet that his boots aren't boxing boots, but wrestling boots. See, wrestling boots are designed for the more dogged and flexible style of wrestling, rather than the stance-based combat of boxing. And as such, by using wrestling boots, he has a better range of motion than other boxers. On top of that, those tights he's wearing have no clear line of demarcation for the waist, and as such are another illegal part. Oh yeah, he also spits in your eyes and headbutts you. However, this is no ordinary spit. As was common in Japanese wrestling, I'd say that this is closer to Dokugiri or Poison Mist. Yeah, in Japan, sometimes they just breathe poison onto each other when they're wrestling. One of the Japanese equivalents to Hulk Hogan, Keiji Muto, used it whenever he warped into his demon alter ego, the Great Muda. Also, the color gave it different elemental properties. Green was poison, red was burning, black was blinding. Man, wrestling's way cooler than boxing, what am I doing? So yeah, if this actually is poison mist, the blue coloring would give it the blinding effect. See, when you spit into somebody's eyes, they don't see in mode seven. So that's a rule break for the spitting, bringing in a foreign substance, and by using that foreign substance. But then there's the headbutt, which seems almost pedantic given what we just discussed. All things considered, and including the fact that his coach tells him to spit in your eyes, that gives Masked Muscle nine infractions. Still dwarfed by Ryan, but an admirable effort nonetheless. Up next is- ah, 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 ah! Anyway, we've come to meet Aaron Ryan on his home turf, and... What the? No headbutts? No elbows? No boxing gloves on string? I don't believe it, but Aaron Ryan isn't cheating. All of his moves, all of his movements, everything is perfectly up to board. Uh, but maybe you could get him on grabbing Little Mac, right? Well, no, that's a clinch. It's a common move in boxing. It's the reason that Mayweather versus Pacquiao is one of the worst fights ever. I genuinely never thought I'd say this, but Aaron's clean. This makes you have to ask, though, what in the hell happened between this game and we determined to a headbutt murdering psychopath? What grudge did the Canadians and the Irish have? Hikikagoro is next, and with him are a couple of really weird rules. First and foremost is his face paint. Kinda weird, I know, but for the same reason you can't have perfume with Don Flamenco, that face paint could be a grease-based paint, and as such would make it easier for blows to slip off his face. Speaking of his face, let's talk about what's on top of it. It's clear that Hiki is proud of his hair, despite graying at 19. However, it's even longer than Bob Charlie's, and as a result, it's much more likely to be told off by the ref that he either needs to cut it or get into some sort of braid. If not by just seeing it, the ref will definitely be getting the cutting shears when he sees him use his hair as a whip to smack Little Mac in the face! Once again, taken from pro wrestling. So he's literally using a part of his body as a foreign object! While long hair in and of itself isn't exactly illegal, this would certainly set the precedent that it is! Other than that, all's well and good except for- Oh yeah, the f***ing teleporting! Now, you may be tempted to say that this is just fancy footwork with the fact that he's a dancer. Well, let me tell you. This is fancy footwork. This is teleportation. I'm an experienced magic critic now, thanks to Great Tiger, and let me tell you something, this is a classic case of teleportation. He even calls it a Mirage Dance too. He was an inspiration! That leaves Hiki with four infractions. Mad Clown is next, and if you thought Masked Muscle was bad, wait till you get a load of this bad boy! From the bottom to the top, he swapped his wrestling boots for clown shoes, wears overalls that don't show a clear line of demarcation and cover the knees, and is wearing a shirt which, while not illegal in an amateur fight, would be in a World Circuit fight, which... Yeah, I probably should've gotten Mac on for last time, but his choice of tank top and not eye-melting blue and white t-shirt is what saved him there. The metal buckles and buttons on his overall as well are a major no-no. Also, and I only realized this after the fight had started, but his ham-shaped head is obscuring a bow tie. How cute! That's illegal. Then there's his face, and he's got two different types of face covering. As we previously covered, you can't have face paint, and his is even more noticeable than Hiki's, given the fact that he is, indeed, a clown. 
but that red nose of his is in no way naturally occurring and is definitely a way of covering the nose when getting punched, which I don't need to tell you, hurts like hell! Now as for his in-ring actions, it's more of the standard cheats like going for an express ear clap, throwing the opponent out of a clinch, trying to chop the opponent with the side of your hand, all the fun of the fair! Then there's his big one. He'll flip backwards into the air and then land on his knee. In boxing, taking a knee is considered down, and as such, he'd be one step closer to a TKO. Then there's a small matter of him throwing balls at your face! Those balls are absolutely not regulation, and add on to that since they weren't inspected by the ref, they could be filled with concrete for all we know! And he brought six of them into the ring! That's six different counts of a foreign weapon, and then there's the fact that he actually throws them! Remember, difference between intent to cheat and actually doing it. With all that, Clown comes out to 17 infractions, which puts him... just too shy of Aaron Ryan. And really, that's only because of how many balls he brings into the ring. Pair them down to one, and he's only got 13. Still the best performance thus far! Great job, Mad Clown! Never come back! Nurses Prince comes next, and I almost want to dock him off the bat for being a literal drooling moron. The guy doesn't want people to punch him in the face, so became a boxer. Oh, I have the best legs in the world, that's why I work as a landmine tester! So from his attire, you can see a few problems, the big one being his Ivy League vest. Not only is such upper body wear illegal, but there's a second shirt underneath. Shirts are already hard to judge, but two shirts is definitely illegal. Next are his boxing trunks. Those bad boys need to be open and free, but these ones are practically skin tight. Then there are his boots, or rather the lack thereof. His shoe choice is for a fresh pair of sneakers, which while stylish, doesn't cut it. However, outside of how he dresses, he actually managed to keep it clean in the ring. So good for you, Narciss! I put this mostly down to the fact that he's so young that he hasn't had a chance to figure out how best to cheat. Unlike our next competitor, Hoy Corlo. You thought Gabby J was over the hill? Hoy here is 78 years old! Gabby was only 56! If 40 is the age that you should stop boxing at, Hoy has been going on 38 years past his sell-by date. On top of his age, his weight is extremely distressing. The man is only 100 pounds! Don't fight him, just fucking pick him up and toss him! Then there's his clothing. A big baggy shirt, long pants, and slippers means he's broken four rules already. I'm also willing to say that his facial hair is way too long to be considered kosher. Then there's his fighting style. Gotta say, can't find anything wrong here. Okay, so bringing a staff into the ring is ridiculous. He's not even trying to hide it. At least Aaron had the decency to hide his flail down his pants. So Hoy not only brings a staff into the ring to hit you with, but he also throws kicks. Uh, but at least his punches are good, right? Wrong, because the only punch he throws is this one. And this is not a punch. This is an open palm strike, which you can't do. After that, he attempts to backhand you with a spin fist, which you can't do. Also, if jumping was illegal, he'd probably be worth about 10 Aaron Ryans. Despite how much people swore by Hoy dwarfing Aaron, he only gets 11. Not even the highest score in this game. Finally are the brothers Bruiser, Rick and Nick. The most boring way to finish out a game. Two bald-headed white guys! Oh boy, Rick Bruiser sure was a boring penultimate boss. I wonder what's next! Ooh! So let's go over shared instances of these actual palette swaps before getting into anything unique. First off, despite being the two top-ranked boxers in the entire world, or the entire special, I guess, neither Rick nor Nick have a definitive place of origin or age. Seeing as King Hippo had the same problem, it's safe to assume that despite their prestigious position, they don't even have a proper boxing license. Going into the fight, and honestly, they both fight the exact same, so the only main problem comes from them both using illegal elbows. Rick has both a jumping and grounded version, while Nick only uses the jumping version. Not only is an elbow an illegal move, but a jumping attack is also illegal. All this time I said jumps are allowed, never included jump attacks. That's the illegal part. So that would land Rick with two as he does the grounded and aerial forms, while Nick only gets one. But Rick still does have one trick left up his sleeve, he's wearing earrings! Just like Super Macho Man, he needs to take those out before he fights, and as such lands him with four infractions to Brother Nick's two. For once, the little brother wins! And that rounds out Super Punch-Out! And with that, the video's over, right? Except no. No, no, it couldn't be over. Of course people were asking for Super Punch-Out, but what ten times as many people were asking about was for one King of Kongs. So let's bite the bullet. Let's talk about Donkey Kong. <laughs> Now, I know I've taken a controversial stance on Donkey Kong in the past, calling him a cartoon character for babies, and sure, I may have proof of that in the form of this cartoon for babies, but I'm first and foremost a man of the people. So if the people really want me to talk about him, by golly, it's my duty to do it! So let's start from the top. 
We all know where Donkey Kong lives. He lives on Congo Bongo, as the cartoon explains. However, a group that has no idea where he comes from is the WVBA, as they don't know his birthplace, weight, or height. That means no weigh-in and no boxing license. I also want to quell the rumors that this fight couldn't take place due to animal cruelty. Donkey Kong is an animal that can talk and think for himself, and it's to be assumed that Donkey Kong gave consent. Yeah, we're doing this joke again. Starting off, you might be tempted to say that these barrels and bananas count as outside objects, and you'd be wrong! These fall under the banner of Entrance Theatrics. If Deontay Wilder can come out dressed as Rhinestone Skeletor for his fight with Tyson Fury, then Donkey Kong can roll out a barrel or two. Before we throw a punch, though, we got a laundry list of things to go over first. First things first, we can see that he has personal branding on his gloves and tie. Second, there's no clear line of demarcation between his waist and below the belt created by his boxing shorts. Next, his shorts don't extend above the knees, also he's not wearing boxing shorts. On top of that, he's not wearing any boots, the tie counts as an accessory, and seeing as we don't know where Donkey Kong comes from and that he's using personalized gloves, it can be assumed that the ref hasn't checked him and that he didn't wrap his fist properly. Donkey Kong is beating most people in the game without ever throwing a punch. Good thing too, as all of his attacks are illegal! First off is his slam attack. That's an overhead club with the side of the glove, so that's two for that. Then there's his body clap, which since his gloves are the size of Little Mac, would result in an ear clap. That clap is also being done with the inside of his gloves. His jumping slam is a jump strike, which isn't allowed, and it doesn't take a genius to see that his taunting pass is excessive and into unsportsmanlike. When he rolls on the ground, he's officially down since his knees make contact with the floor. And then he throws a massive backhand! Then in the corner he's seen munching on a banana, which is illegal. You can't eat in the corner. Not that you'd want to, because imagine eating food then going out to fight! You may also ask if kidnapping Mac at the end of the fight counts as a rule break. Listen, once the bell rings, they can do whatever they want. You know, it's not my problem! No rules saying that you don't own the loser. Overall, that leaves Donkey Kong with an unbelievable 19 infractions, and in a shocking upset, ties him with our current champion, Aaron Ryan! It looks like the fairy tale dream of Ryan has finally come to an end, as it took a literal wild animal without an understanding of how to box to tie him! Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't have seen it coming, but... What if I told you that, as several people pointed out, Aaron has one last trick up his sleeve? In contender mode, if you lose against him, Ryan will headbutt the camera. Assuming that the camera is meant to be a WVBA cameraman, that means that Ryan will have destroyed WVBA property and has broken one more rule, routing him up to an even 20! Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, and still WVBA Cheaters Champion, Aaron Ryan! Alright boys, get a visual, fire! You know, instead of ending one of these with a gag, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Everyone who watched the last one of these helped support me through incredibly selfless donations and just made the impossible seem possible. You've impacted my life in a way that I'd completely written off. I can only hope that my stupid video helps your day by making it just a little bit better by being funny. And all I can hope is that the rest of these are just as fun as this one. And to finish this one off in the spirit of the first one, with all these new rule breakers on the scene, I think this redesign of Mac is a little outdated. Much better.